The protests in Brazil have fallen out of the headlines a bit in the last few days and a couple of subscribers have asked us to go back to the story and take a look at recent events and what the protests have actually achieved. So here you go. So the protests actually started a couple of weeks ago against rising bus fares and the cost of hosting the World Cup next year and the Olympics in 2016. For many Brazilians, coping with transport costs is already incredibly difficult, so even a seemingly small rise in bus fares of 20 cents is actually a big deal. The protesters argue that instead of channeling the equivalent of 16 billion quid into the sporting events, that money could be better spent on education, healthcare and other public services. But there have also been allegations of political corruption, that high-profile figures have been lining their pockets rather than looking out for the people. Then there's PEC 37, a proposed piece of legislation that would limit the powers of federal prosecutors to investigate crimes, which protesters say would make it harder to crack down on political corruption. Now, there have been widespread protests across the country. In fact, last weekend, it's thought that more than a million people were marching through the streets in protests in over 100 cities across the country. <laughs> More than 100,000 people came out in the Port of Recife, streaming down one of the main roads through the city. And in a slightly bizarre turn of events, a group of policemen actually came out in support of the protesters in that same crowd. But that's an exception rather than the rule. At most of the protests, the police have been far more confrontational, using rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse everyone. There have been widespread allegations that the police have been heavy-handed, even brutal in their approach. One of the slogans you'll hear a lot is Sem Violencia, or without violence, and for the vast majority of the protests, that's been true. But there have been outbreaks of violence. Criminals have been capitalising on the disorder to carry out robberies, and the first deaths during the protest happened in the last few days. Crowds surrounded this SUV for two minutes in the state of Sao Paulo, blocking its route. The driver then reversed out slowly before flooring it straight into the people in front. A number of people were injured in this shocking incident and an 18-year-old man was actually killed. Two more people died in a similar incident near the capital, Brasilia, and a 54-year-old woman has died of a heart attack in the city of Belém in the Amazon after she inhaled tear gas. Violent incidents have been increasing, with a few attacks on police, cases of vandalism and even arson. Most of the violence from protesters has been focused on government buildings, bus company property and buses themselves. But it's still a minority doing this, with initial organisers saying that they've been hijacked. The majority have actually been trying to calm the violence, arguing that destroying public buildings and buses is counterintuitive and will end up costing the taxpayers even more money. And that's part of the problem for the protesters in Brazil, because the whole thing could actually backfire on them. A lot of the protests have been focused around football stadia. The Confederations Cup is being held in Brazil at the moment, and there were reports that football's governing body, FIFA, would demand compensation if it was disrupted or if players were put in danger. Now, the same has been said about the World Cup, although FIFA has just dismissed concerns that it may have to be delayed, cancelled or moved saying it will definitely be held on time in Brazil. But if it were to be disrupted and compensation was to be claimed, then the protests would have contributed to it costing even more. Some people have also accused the protesters of being too short-termist, saying that these protests will actually put tourists off coming to the country during the competitions and that that will cost them a huge amount of money. But is that really a reason not to protest? Will any of the money generated by these sporting Uber events held in the country actually filter down to the Brazilian people? For years now, we've been hearing about how Brazil's got a miracle economy with incredible GDP growth and rapidly expanding industries. But has any of that money filtered down to the people who are struggling to pay for their bus fares and to cope with the rising cost of living? But perhaps they are forcing change. Today, Brazil's leader, Dilma Rousseff, has promised a series of reforms on education, health, public transport investment, fiscal responsibility and forming a constituency assembly to make sure that reforms are put into practice. So it could be that there's genuine change coming in Brazil or it could just be that the politicians there have decided to try and buy themselves some time and space with this announcement. There's a hell of a lot going on in Brazil at the moment. We'll do our best to try and keep up with everything and let you guys know about it. In the meantime, there's a couple of videos over there that you can watch and there's also a big subscribe button up there. If you haven't pressed it already, please do.